Chapter 7171 A Mother's Love You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. A distant memory surfaced in his mind, which was so vivid and vital to him because it was the first night his mother agreed to train him. The memory was of his mother, her beautiful face radiant as she sat her young son on her lap, they were looking at images on her data pad, and the moment orcs were shown, the young raven pointed to them. Ah, Guanfather. Guanma, dot his words caused a sudden jolt in the body of Morgrena as she looked at her son, realizing something that she forgot to teach him, it was something like breathing to her, so how could she remember it off the top of her head? No. Alistair. No. He asked, tilting his head. These are not good orcs. Her words might have been simplified, but how could she expect her son to understand the difference between the dungeon orcs and the ones that greeted them each morning down the road, offering their oranges and fruits to the cute Alistair? A crooked smile came to Raven's face as he took another step, the rain now hammering down onto his body as the loud pitter dot patter of the droplets formed a background song, their rhythm fast and enchanting. Buhi. What are you saying? The leading orc asked his weapon now on his back, walking closer to the stationary raven whose face was hidden as he looked down, his shoulders quivering as if crying. Somehow the leader wished to soothe his fellow orc, their kind typically never fought even over women. Slowly he approached merely a dozen centimeters from raven's body. As he began to reach out, the scene was almost warming from the back, and the females started to place their children down, seeming to feel the danger was over, and now there was a strong and virile male in the tribe. Why would they feel any sorrow? The dungeon monsters and orcs, as a tribe, prefer a person's power over the sentiment of a lover. Only rare orcs or those with purer bloodlines. The stronger an orc's bloodline, the closer their feelings to a human, nobles and royalty loved and cared for each other and would gladly die for a spouse, but an average orc would eat her husband and children if starving. Boogie. It's great to have such a strong warrior joining us. The leader said, his voice prideful and happy. However, the instant his hand tapped Raven's shoulder, the sound of tearing flesh, and organs being ripped apart, filled the area as a sharp tail penetrated through the leader's chest. Its barbed tip yanked the leader's organs onto the floor as his life began to wane rapidly, being sucked dry through the thick end. Ha 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 ha. Fucking dungeon monsters, dare to trick me. Dot. The next moment, the illusion began to shimmer and fade as Raven's body trembled with countless bloody wounds and scars and stood in the center of a strange arena, almost a bloody ocean filling it. A ferocious orc with its axe lodged in Raven's shoulder as blood poured from the wound was held in the air, his tail slowly drinking the orc alive, its face filled with despair as it desperately tried to escape from his inevitable death. Fucking trial. I'll destroy you. They were wailing on my body while you showed me such a damn peaceful image. I don't control the trial contents. I don't give a fuck. Look at my body. If I go home like this, Emily will cry. She's just a. I dare you to finish those words, and I'll tear your shitty gates down right now. I can become strong without you. Ugh. Please. I am just. Raven stepped forward, grabbing the giant orc's face, the eyes still slightly resilient and filled with a violent hatred towards him. Bang. Unable to attack the system, he smashed the orc's face against the solid ground, ensuring he didn't hit enough to kill or break the orc's bones. Bang. 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 For over an hour, he tortured the orc, the anger towards this situation causing him to feel a sense of distrust and desire to dominate not just his enemies but he would conquer this technique. I will make you obey me, if I say jump, you fly. You think a mere orc can achieve that, what arrogance. Arrogance is fine, mere orc is fine. Raven's body spread his arms, dried and fresh blood splashing around him, covering the countless orc corpses as his head flicked back, looking into the sky as he bellowed with a broad, devilish grin, his hand tightly grasping Morval swinging it towards the sky, picturing his axe cutting down the twelve gates and standing above their ruined remains. 
because that's who I am. He didn't wait for any response, grabbing the massive chest with one arm, throwing it over his shoulder with the handle and walking towards the exit. In the darkness, three figures stood watching as the third bar of the second gate was filled. Two males, one short and familiar, one tall and elf-like. One female, her eyes watching the boy slowly walking away, his powerful shoulders carrying a massive axe and treasure chest, his chest filled with bloody scars, yet he pushed it out with pride. My little Alistair. You remembered my words. Even after you grew up so big. Hey. Even if you are little Phyllis dad. If my little raven doesn't heal fully, I'll fucking kill you. The short male began to kick the shins of the tall elf. His deep voice was filled with powerful emotion. Oi oi. Little man, why did you never act this way for him? It's no wonder he only remembers your wife. Are you going to watch him steal her away, look at how shiny her eyes are. Shut the fuck up. I will make him fuck your wife, she's still living down there, right? How about your other daughter? The elf suddenly began to fight back as the two men started using pro-wrestling moves on each other. You leave my cute Delia alone. I already have one crazed slut of a daughter, don't make it two. Ah. Delia. Papa will come back. Wait. Papa will save you from that damn orc. Heh. Just because your cock is tiny. Oi. God might forgive you, but I sure as hell won't. Alandris, the father of Phyllis and Delia, began to scream, drawing his bow as she started shooting at the phantom of Sylvester Belhume, Raven's father. They slowly faded inside the dungeon's darkness as Raven jumped out of the portal. Morgrena was still watching her boy as he became a man when she was not looking a sense of emotion on her face, as she clenched her ethereal hands, if she was a flesh body, there might be blood oozing from her fingers. Sylvester. I want to leave the dungeon. I want to be with our son again. A blur of black mist appeared beside her as Sylvester placed his hands on her tall shoulder, forced to use his skills to remain in the air to not look like a child beside her. Don't worry, Anna, it won't be long. She looked to her loving husband, then back to the fading portal, her face forlorn and bitter. A second longer is already too long. Chapter 7272 Strangers in the Night, 1, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Oh, Chimera of Black Storm Monster of Endless Hunger Oh, Chimera, Manticore slash High Orc, oh, age 28, visually 21, oh, blood type O.Z10, oh, level 15 O oh, class Dread Knight O, oh, experience 77-150-O, Cultivation The Twelve Gates of Bliss, Manticore Only, O, Cultivation Realm Gate 2, Gateway of the Heart, O, Cultivation Stage Stage 4 O, Credits 1950-plus, 220 Liliths Pocket Money, Strength 6.3 Agility 3.6 Stamina 7.4 Vitality 8.2 Intellect 3.7 Wisdom 3.60 Skills Manticore's Heart, Passive, Level 2 Increases Vitality and Stamina Regeneration at all times, creating the perfect mate for a female Manticore. Your Manticore blood causes females to have a more favorable impression of you. Women in love with you will quickly become aroused by you being around them. Shadow Strike Level 5, dash towards an enemy and brutalize them with a dark cleaving double strike, causing heavy shadow damage, ignoring defense. Dot it can be used two times per cast. 3. Dot second cooldown stamina.1.5 wisdom.0.5 dread aura, level 2. Cause fear to all enemies around you, slowing their actions for 2.5 seconds, and you take 30% reduced damage for 6 seconds after it ends. Once the effect ends, you will take 45% more damage for 10 seconds 14. Second cooldown no cost Raven's body was exhausted, today's trial was something he couldn't deal with well, but it taught him something important. 
my trials won't start unless I am inside the dungeon. He slipped his phone from his pocket before messaging his little manticore and dryad. Emily is so cute, sending my pictures from her day out, I wonder who the friend she met was, although I can see her dress and feet, there are no other images of her face. Those legs look a little familiar, though. Lilith's messages were a little more chaotic, she scolded him for being late and a manslut. Raven didn't know why she said that until he noticed that the second card he gave her seemed to have purchased the tier 3 subscription for 50 credits to a site called The Ardent Orc, which made him remember Miriam. This girl is watching me have sex with another woman again. I worry for her mental health. Should I start using her tail every night before bed so she stops being so horny? Hashtag despite his thoughts being stupid and pointless, they took his mind off the current pain in his mind and body, the cold evening wind began to bite at his almond skin, and looking towards the distance as the howling it caused was quite soothing. Pitter, patter, as he was walking down the sidewalk, rain began to slowly drip along the ground as Raven looked up into the night sky, a beautiful white moon with a silver glow greeting him, suddenly a soft scent of peaches and grapes wafted into his nose as a female gentle bumped into his shoulder, her steps were light as she quickly twirled her body around to face him, rubbing her shoulder. Ah! You struck me. What will you do to make it up to me? The woman spoke with a strange voice, it was rough but someone with a very polite and good upbringing. She looked towards him with pale golden eyes shimmering in the moonlight. The rain cascaded over their bodies, and the pavement, accompanied by a beautiful array of cherry blossoms, began swirling around their bodies, staring into each other's eyes. Peach hair, like a pink blossom swaying in the strong breeze, her soft lips as if smeared with cherries, slowly parting with their thick size and glossy texture. What did you have in mind? Raven asked, his mind and heart still affected by his trial, as this beautiful woman's scent and looks allowed him to focus on something different, whether it was for a single night or not. He wanted to sleep with her. When he looked at her, the moonlight seemed to glow with a peach light. This woman's allure was not ordinary as his chest began to throb, the same feeling as when he met Claudina and Nene the other night. Her ears were short but pointed, with cute little earrings dangling from them, on her head were two crooked but beautiful horns pointing to the skin with a purple and pink glint that reminded him of the energy he found inside himself and the women he interacted with. Is there something strange about her? Is this some trap to take my money? She wore a short black dress with a diamond opening for her cleavage and pink patterns and flowers down the center. Raven had to admit her breasts were as big as Zestria's, the enforcer he met in the dungeon when he was poaching, while her arms were wrapped in a white silky cloth draping near the ground. Shall we find somewhere private to talk about things together? It's a little cold, and the rain is dirtying my kimono. True. Shall we go then? I'll pay you to choose the place. He responded by habit, remembering Phyllis and Emily and not caring about the price. Humph. Who do you think I am? I'll pay. She moved towards him, aggressively grasping his hand, her soft lips letting out a gasp before pulling him along, her black tail with a cute black heart dot shaped tip swaying in the air as he followed along. I'm sorry for this girl. But I don't want to take out this frustration and lust on Lilith. This woman seems to be experienced. Raven only thought this because she had the succubus tattoo on her lower body, shown only momentarily as the heavy wind blew her black dress to the side. He followed in silence as the pheromones and aroma from her body added to the tingling sensation that ran down his arm from the hand she was grasping felt wonderful and caused his little brother to start raging in his already tight trousers. They walked through the streets and alleyways of the city, passing through the busy streets and buildings, avoiding the occasional person that glanced at the pair of people dressed in such a way and walking through the back roads, where the lights were dimmer, the air colder and quieter, eventually arriving at a building with a green lantern on top of it. A love hotel. She would pick a place like this. He couldn't help but wonder as he let her lead him inside. The room's interior wasn't very fancy, there weren't any tables, chairs or anything else inside besides a few beds in a corner. Please wait here, 
I'll be right back. She said before skipping away to the shower, but this caused him to be even more certain she was an experienced woman in succubus, this room wasn't wrong, at least it was clean. Sitting on the bed, he took off his jacket and folded it. While the sound of water hitting the bath and her body sounded in his room, countless worries and thoughts filled his mind as if she could be anybody, what if her lover came now, or if she was some anti-succubus exploration officer or something. But he couldn't calm the fully erect member in his pants, forced to loosen his belt and zip to stop it from hurting when pressing against the tight fabric. Should I ask Zestria how to make a succubus happy? Raven decided this was the most logical idea, if she was someone who had terrible intentions, why not make her come until she couldn't resist and then leave alone before she robbed him or someone came, and he was forced to kill them. He gets to deal with his lust, and the girl gets a thick dosage of his essence. Is she undergoing the succubi's yearning? A succubus would have several periods during a month where their bodies would become unbearably aroused and horny at random, almost forcing them to need a man no matter who it was, during these periods, their bodies would pump out a thick fruity scent depending on the girl and her body would secrete powerful pheromones and aphrodisiacs that would attract males. The more powerful their bloodline, the bigger the need. Come to think of it, her scent was powerful. Is this her yearning period? Raven also read that if they didn't find a sufficient release in time, they might make berserk and violate men until they were delighted if they lacked the expensive medicine that suppresses these fits. However, they only need one or two shots inside the maximum if they do it. He began to tap on his data pad, opening information pages, before sending a quick message to Zestria. She said she would offer him help if he had any questions, so he asked what kind of things make a succubus horny and feel pleasure beyond belief. The moment his message was sent, the bag left by this girl vibrated, but Raven thought nothing of it, she was a female out at this time of night, maybe it was a lover, family member or friend. Thus he didn't check or snoop, that was impolite. He heard the bathroom door open and close and a faint feminine breathing sound as he turned his attention to the window, looking outside. All the lights were shining in the dark evening, and it was raining heavily again, but he couldn't hear any car doors slamming shut or footsteps coming across the parking lot. I'm back, she said with a giggle, she was wearing a simple white towel, and her beautiful breasts were visible through the gaps in it, also bulging from the top as they were squashed down when she moved towards him, he could see her tiny pink nipples that stood out in the cool night air, her body glistening with water droplets. So, what shall we do? I've always wanted to try a random stranger's cock during my yearning period. She whispered, the thick scent of peach and vanilla filling the room as her pheromones and aphrodisiac assaulted his nose and mind. The woman then thought to herself as she reached out her hand to him, her long fingers wrapping around his erect member. By the way, handsome, your cock is massive. My hands are so tiny in comparison. He watched as she leaned towards the table taking out her phone, the black handset quite conservative for a succubus, as she read through her messages with a funny smirk on her face, the slightly wet pink hair swaying with her movements as her hand began to trace along his trousers, pulling them open, and sliding them to the ground with a flirtatious smile. Your tit seem big enough to wrap it well and still have room to suck the tip, though. Her face looked at him, a little shocked, before she snickered. Oh. Do you want a blowjob, too? Will you like my ass and cunt until I climax if I do? Raven lifted his hips, and his lower body became utterly naked, the massive orsish club slapping against her inner thighs with a heavy thud before she opened her mouth into a wide circle. My name is Rhea. I want you to fuck me with this thing. My mouth dot tits. Ass dot or pussy. Use any of them and make me forget this yearning and I'll make it worth your while. Mr. Handsome Orc, do we have a deal? Rhea's eyes were alight in the darkness, the moonlight shining on her soft white skin, her body so beautiful he'd stare at her forever if he could. His cock pulsated with excitement, and a slight growl escaped his throat as his hands gripped her head, holding her in place and making her look up at him. Deal. He said with a grunt as he stood up, her head now barely to his chest, 
as he pushed her down before he placed the tip of his cock between her pink lips, which parted and accepted his shaft. The warmth and moisture of his sticky unwashed tip caused her face to look of utter euphoria as her golden eyes narrowed, wrapping her lips around him as she moved forward, enjoying the feeling of his hand ruffling her soft pink hair. She slowly slid down his thick shaft with her glossy, red lips, pulling back with wet slurps until just his tip touched her lips, squishing them with his heavy rod before she slid back down. The alluringly wet slurping sound filled the room until his entire length was inside her mouth, leaving a string of saliva behind as her throat let out an erotic splutter, forcing her drool to seep from her nose and lips. Rhea's eyes were fixated on him, filled with burning lust. Chapter 7373 Strangers in the Night 2 R18, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Deal. He said with a grunt as he stood up, her head now barely to his chest, as he pushed her down before he placed the tip of his cock between her pink lips, which parted and accepted his shaft. Dot the warmth and moisture of his sticky unwashed tip caused her face to look of utter euphoria as her golden eyes narrowed, wrapping her lips around him as she moved forward, enjoying the feeling of his hand ruffling her soft pink hair. She slowly slid down his thick shaft with her glossy, red lips, pulling back with wet slurps until just his tip touched her lips, squishing them with his heavy rod before she slid back down. The alluringly wet slurping sound filled the room until his entire length was inside her mouth, leaving a string of saliva behind as her throat let out an erotic splutter, forcing her drool to seep from her nose and lips. Rhea's eyes were fixated on him, filled with burning lust. The succubus closed her mouth over his cock. They sucked in a deep breath, drawing a sharp intake as she started savoring his musky and thick scent, pressing her nose against the sticky purple bulb, enjoying the thick aroma that made her body tremble. A thick duzz of essence filled her body as she slid her warm, slimy tongue over his cock, taking himself deeper, wrapping her mouth around his thick glands, gently rocking her upper body with a wet splutter. Suddenly, she stopped with half his shaft inside her, gliding it along her tongue before licking him with watery, slurping circular motions, causing her pink lips to suck at his cock. MMNPH such a tasty and fat cock. NNNNMN. Her mind was lost in the heady moment, the alluring musk of his thick seed filling her lungs with a rich and exotic aroma. She didn't know when she started sucking on him like a horny slut, only the sweet and savory taste of his cock drove her crazy, making her mind turn white while blowing him, she only knew how good his cock tasted. Gubu MNNNNGH NNNNPH Her throat was filled with his shaft as she pushed his tip deeper inside her mouth, those beautiful eyes peering up towards him filled with a wet and dreamy look. It was like a never-dot-ending source of pure essence that felt like a sweet reward after days of aching hunger. The alluring aroma of his essence, a heady mix of spices, a tangy citrus undertone that filled her senses as she took him deeper and deeper down her throat. She had to squeeze her hand around his ass with her delicate fingers to prevent his cock from slipping out her throat. As the succubus bobbed her head back and forth on his cock, the wet sounds of her mouth sliding along his cock echoed around the room, causing her to giggle softly into his cock as she gave a hot, lewd laugh. She started sliding her soft lips up and down his shaft, using the suction of her luscious pink lips to make his cock tremble, sucking on the thick shaft with a pleasant and satisfied look, taking his entire length inside her mouth until she was barely able to fit him in her throat, groaning as his thick, purple cock toyed with the back of her throat. Gubu MNNGH Rhea's nose began to bubble with drool as it seeped down her face, tears oozing from her pretty eyes as the black mascara started to run slightly, a strange but sexy sight which caused Raven's lust to boiling over, grabbing her two small horns as he began to fuck her face relentlessly. The soft, slimy feeling of her nose being crushed against his pelvis as she struggled to breathe, almost drowning in her saliva, causing pleasure to tingle down his spine as her throat tightened like a slippery pussy around his shaft. Suck faster, use your tongue to slide under the ridge of my glands. He said through gritted teeth as he grabbed her long pink hair with his right hand, forcing her head to bounce with each thrust, moving his hips to rub his wet cock against her soft pink lips, causing her to gag with every thrust. 
nnngh ma mmph gobu shrp Rhea gagged as he kept driving his cock deeper into her throat with each thrust, the tip of his shaft hitting her tonsils, filling her nose with the sweet taste of his essence and the tangy aroma of his sweat. A hot tingle ran down his spine as he felt his seed boil inside his balls, sending his senses into a primal bliss. He wrapped her thick hair into a pseudo-ponytail with his fingers to stop her from bouncing too much, grabbing her chin to force her eyes open and mouth open. She gave a husky gasp as she tried to push back against the powerful thrusts, making him grunt, gripping her hair tighter. His eyes rolled as his first shot of hot spunk hit her tongue, filling her throat with hot cum before it seeped out the corner of her mouth, dripping down her chest as his cock squelched against her lips. His second spurt landed on her cheek, squirting against her skin. Raven felt a fantastic sensation of pleasure, her mouth was as warm and sticky as a pussy, her cheek sticking to his shaft, sliding along them with the help of her tongue that coiled around his rod, sliding and milking him like a slimy, wet hand jerking him off inside her mouth. She was caught by surprise, gagging on his cock and trying to suck more of his cock as he blew another large dollop of his seed, making her swallow again and again. Her slender tongue flicked over the head of his cock as she swallowed the thick goo with a loud slurping noise, tasting him like she never tasted anything before, so very different from the chilled human taste from the past but so delicious in its unique way. MMNGH, ah. Un. Rhea let out a strangled sound, the pressure of his cock nearly blinding her, the sheer strength that pushed her head back forced him to tighten his grip on her hair, holding her head in place. Then he felt her throat contract around his shaft, pushing him deeper with an erotic squelch of his cock, then Rhea's throat began to gulp down his spunk, forcing his cock deeper into her gullet, spitting drool into his crotch as he filled her belly with his essence. Raven grunted and growled in ecstasy as Rhea was finally able to take all of his cock inside her throat, gurgling as he continued to fill her belly until finally she reached a limit and had to pull back, spitting up a stream of hot cum while giving a long, deep throaty gasp as she released his cock from her wet mouth with a wet plop. Rhea let out a satisfied sigh, licking her lips with a soft lick, taking the last traces of his essence off her tongue before wiping the droplets away with the back of her hand. Oh wow, your cum is so fucking tasty. Rhea said with a sultry smirk as she leaned forward to give his shaft a wet kiss, rubbing it against her wet, pink lips, her saliva dripping onto his post as she leaned back. She looked up at him, the succubus having just one thing in mind. To make this man her sex friend. Or hopefully lover. You're such an amazing stud. MMPH. Raven stood over the bed with his fists clenched, breathing heavily, trying to get a handle on the tingling pleasure that ran through his body. He had been face dot fucking a beautiful pink dot haired succubus for hours. He felt like he'd passed out at some point because of the blissful sensation. She lay upside down, her face filled with a gooey mess of sperm, drool and other bubbling juices as her dazed eyes looked up at him, still dangling upside down, with a completely blank look in her eyes. Mmm, so many shots. My little belly is so full. She smiled with a happy expression as she looked up at him, as if it was all worth it, which made his cock twitch. Nnnnnnn. I hope you enjoyed my soft, pink lips. Rhea's words were slow and sensual, making his spine tremble with a strange jolt of desire and lust. As if reading his thoughts, Rhea looked up towards his crotch, watching it rise again. Holy fuck. Raven muttered under his breath, a pang of need rushing through his stomach as she gazed up. How about you fill this hole now her legs lifting into the air as she spread them apart, revealing her soft, neat and pristine pussy with a thin, sticky, slimy dribbling down from her slit. She teased, pulling both sides of her alluring petals apart with her fingers, rubbing her clit as his eyes were fixated on her pink folds, the puffy flesh looking like a delicious treat. He took a deep breath as she rubbed her clit, making it gleam wetly as she leaned back to face him, those soft golden eyes peering at him. Please, I need your big. Strong. Orc cock.to plunge deep inside and violate me. 
His blood boiled when she used her cute, husky voice to make him want to take her right then, he had never felt such intense lust before in all his life. He gripped the bedsheets as his mind began to melt, feeling his balls boil over with heat. His cock swelled up quickly, making a loud, wet pop, pressing against his pelvis. Goo. Ga. Ah, Rhea mewled as his thick cock pushed against her face, its weight crushing her nose, squishing it flat as his sticky shaft began to slap against her face, throbbing the excess sperm oozing down her chin and smearing her lips. As if entranced, her lips began to kiss his dick affectionately like she was enthralled by the shaft's majestic, softly opening her mouth to wrap around his vast balls, sucking on them with a wet pop as her tongue slid down the crease before she even reached his ass. Her pale skin glistened with the slickness of his seed and sweat as she sucked on his shaft and balls while kissing his ass passionately as if it was causing her great pleasure, her hands held onto the post to hold him upright. He grunted in satisfaction, grabbing her long hair as she struggled, pushing her face against his pelvis, she gave a desperate moan as she tried to resist the powerful thrusts, making him grin as he tightened his fingers around her hair, pulling on the thick strands. Ha! You want my big cock so bad. He growled with a lewd laugh, knowing Rhea would always respond well to this teasing, making her tense up as he pushed deeper into her mouth. The slimy sensation of his cock hitting the back of her throat sent her into a lustful spasm as the suction of his thick cock made her gulp for air, choking a little. Still, she managed to suck on his shaft until his entire length was inside her mouth, making it almost impossible to breathe. However, he quickly pulled out, the long strange, slimy drool mixed with his sperm forming a long, drooping bridge as Raven moved towards the bed, sitting down and leaning back, his towering rod soaring into the heavens and swaying with his excitement. If you want my cock, sit on my lap like the succubus you are. The orc said with a dark, menacing smile, his heart pounding with desire, his cock standing at attention. Rhea took a deep breath before looking at him pleadingly as if she was about to accept his order, her plump hips hovered over his tip as her eyes looked at him. A mixture of anticipation, worry, curiosity and lust, her mouth letting out a sultry moan as his vast hands began to pull her hips down, aligning her tightly closed entrance with his massive tip. Ah! Rhea's voice became a muffled sound as she leaned forward to line up her pussy, stretching her petite pussy muscles around his considerable girth, taking some of his thick lengths. His dick was covered in a slimy layer of her spit, making it look all the more obscene when she slowly slid down his shaft, making the cockhead bump against her wet slit, then her pussy, before she finally took him inside. Raven grunted as she struggled to take more, Rhea whimpered as her pussy stretched open with a wet squelch, opening up to him, ready for her first orc cock. Actually, to be accurate, it was her first real cock, as the monstrous glands began to expand her soft, chaste entrance. Chapter 7474 A Familiar Succubus, 1. R18, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. The two spent several minutes kissing each other in a passionate caress, Raven's hands enjoying the soft and squishy texture of her creamy ass that pressed against him. He slipped the tip of his cock from her body as their kiss became more passionate. At the same time, Rhea's hip swayed, letting it jiggle to make her more alluring to him. Raven grabbed her hips, lifting her into the air as they looked into each other's eyes, one a passionate demon filled with an endless thirst for essence and pleasure, while the other a ravenous beast that wanted to devour the demon. Do you want to enjoy this cock? His sultry voice asked, Raven's thick hands holding the base and slapping it gently against her soft pink petals and tracing along her sticky slit, the honey from her arousal dripping down his shaft while his juices were smeared along her pussy. His huge hands were big enough to completely grasp her ample buttocks that easily slid into his palms like she was created for his enjoyment, and he hers. Rhea didn't respond, instead, she pushed herself back, laying down with a slight bounce, her soft tits wobbling before the beast pinned both of her arms down, pushing his hips forward as his cock quickly drilled into her lustful succubus cunt. Oh! A succubus with her hymen intact. Rhea's body lay on her back, spreading her legs as he pushed her down, the cheap bed making a loud creak, 
each time his cock pushed through her soft folds as their sticky flesh pulled along his shaft, teasing his foreskin and glands. Raven's eyes examined the body of the voluptuous succubus, her entire being brimming with pink essence, like as it was pure liquid, as it flowed around her body and down her soft tunnel that constricted and tightly wrapped around his member, the slight barrier of her first time quickly taken as her face only showed a look of bliss. Oh! Rhea breathed out, Raven grunting as he took a deep breath and pushed in, the tight opening gave way, and his length slowly slipped into her hot, slick, wet folds. His massive tool was roughly three times the girth of a human penis and quite a few inches longer, the perks of being of the high.orc bloodline, as the succubi's pussy began to use its magic on his rod, causing it to expand, pressing into her inner depths, rubbing against her cervix as it buried itself deep within her womb. Dot yeast. The succubus whispered a sharp intake of air, a gasp escaping her lips as the pressure was taken from her, and the mighty beast within began to swell, swelling with his excitement. She could feel he was different as her insides felt the pressure of his cock far beyond the books her mother gave her to read, inside, it was like a succubus handbook for the most amazing men to sleep with and use for relieving their moment of need. Show me. NNNGH the real you. M meant deeper. Poke me where no succubus has felt before. Rhea's voice held an overtone of lust as Raven grunted, pushing in further, and the succubus moaned as he pushed through her cervix, sliding out of her pussy, then thrusting back into her womb as her entrance stretched open, allowing him to reshape her insides to his curved cock. The orc groaned at her words, a smile coming to his face, this girl doesn't just mean this, her eyes. She wants something different. He thought with a wicked grin. With a swift movement, Rhea's hands pulled on his shoulders, wrapping around them and yanking his body towards hers, pulling him down so that they were face dot to dot face, a look of desire and longing in her eyes. Ha! You're so bad. Let this little demon punish you Fufu. Raven grunted like a beast before Rhea locked lips with him, their tongues immediately intertwining, the pair moaning and panting as his massive member gouged out her insides with a slippery and brutal thrust, causing her soaked pussy to squelch as her honey. Bubbled from their connection, dripping onto the sheets as she grasped the covers, enjoying the feeling of his thighs slapping against her ass. She could feel the monster within growing, swelling inside her womb as it pressed against her soft walls, stretching her pink insides apart. His hips began to drive his cock into her wet flesh as if his life depended on it, the two moaning and panting with each thrust, as Rhea's insides began to adjust, the beast within her welcoming him and accepting him, and his cock pushing deep into her womb. After only a few minutes, Raven felt his shaft swell, and the pressure was like nothing he'd ever known. The force of her tight pussy gripped his cock, squeezing him, milking his glands with the heat of her insides, almost sucking his rod so much it was torn from his body. Ah! A sharp grunt escaped Rhea's lips as he bottomed out, filling her, a surge of pleasure running through her body as he served her, giving her what she needed. He buried himself in her as his hips thrust violently, his heavy balls slapping against her plump ass, making a loud thunk when they struck. Ah! Ha! She moaned, panting as he drove her mad with desire, her mind and soul drowning in the lust of the moment, the scent of their sex filling the air, hot, thick, sticky, musky, and so sweet. The succubus groaned as the first decisive spurt of cum shot out of his girthy shaft and into her, pouring his hot seed deep within her womb, as his entire body stiffened and then shook for several long moments, his cock twitching as he emptied his balls deep within her. Finally, the mighty beast quieted, and the two collapsed upon the bed, panting in each other's arms as the last of the strong orc seed leaked from her pussy, splashing onto his shaft and drizzling down between her legs. I'm a man, wow. You were incredible. Rhea gasped, pressing her lips to his as if she hadn't had enough, and she was on fire, her hands roaming over his muscular back, sliding around and up underneath her, groping his toned, mighty ass cheeks. Raven chuckled at her enthusiasm before he pushed her onto her back, her plump breasts hanging free, her ample chest covered in a fine layer of sweat as he began to rub them, licking her sweaty flesh and nipples. 
You got a nice ass, Rhea, Raven whispered, his hips pushing against her ass, feeling the soft and squishy texture crushed by his muscular thighs. It's the biggest and most alluring I've ever seen. Zestria, you are a wonderful woman. Dot. A sharp yelp escaped her lips as he pulled one of her wide, fat buttocks towards him, using his thumb and forefinger to grab her fleshy ass dot cheeks, spreading them apart as his lips closed over her anus, rubbing it with his rough tongue. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Ha. Her breath caught in her throat as his giant cock, slick with her juices, pressed against her pussy, dripping more of its liquid into her open passage, the wet sound filling the air. Ah. Yes, that it's Estria. Please. I need it again. Your. Your thick, big cock is so good in me. Dot. Chapter 7575. Familiar Succubus, 2. R18, you are listening at novel full. Audio. Raven looked down at the succubus, her cunt oozing with his sperm as she looked up at him as if dying for more, his blue eyes shining as he looked at her with a vicious gaze. Turn over, put your ass into the air. His voice was commanding, and she obeyed his command like a dog, her mind still hazy due to the thick load of the essence and purple energy causing havoc inside her womb and body, despite the fact she felt it growing inside her, she couldn't resist his command, as if the essence in her body, took control of her mind briefly. She turned over on all fours, leaving her pussy exposed and ready, looking back at him as she waited, a smile playing about her red lips, a thick glob of sperm oozing from her lewd slit, still gaping from being fucked a moment before, she swayed her ass, with as his vast hands pulled apart her cheeks, revealing her light pink asshole. Peh. Raven spat on her ass, the spit slipping down her ass as he pushed his thumb against her back entrance, rubbing the slimy honey from her pussy and his spit into her as she began to squirm her hips, letting out a low groan. Do you like being treated like garbage or want to be a queen? Little succubus princess. Can you make a succubus submit with a mere orc cock? The succubus asked, pushing her ass into the air, her swollen clit peeking out from underneath as she held her butt cheeks apart, pressing her face against the pillow as she awaited his response. Oh. You're such a cocky little bitch for someone who only just lost her virginity. Raven grunted as his fingers teased her ass, slowly pushing inside her tight hole that sucked tightly on his fingers. She moaned at his touch, squeezing her cheeks around his fingers as her face looked smug and victorious, my am a succubus, we are born to drain men dry with our cunts, stupid boy. You say you're a succubus, but your cunt is full of my essence, gaping so wide as it begs for more, yet here I am, still rock hard and ready to fuck your asshole. So how will you drain me dry? You little girl. Raven said, pulling back his hand from her ass with a lewd pop. His cock slid along her juicy wet slit, coating his tip in thick semen, before sliding it back along her, pushing his semen dot smeared tip into her tightly closed ass, which pulsed and tightened around his glands like a vice. Dot yeast. Raven let out a guttural cry of delight, grabbing onto her soft ass, his fingers sinking deep into her flesh, cutting her smooth, creamy skin with his sharpening nails, feeling his giant cock force her sphincter open and allow him access to her bowels, the thick head spreading her wider than it should have been able to, stretching her ass in her innermost parts. Her ass is as slippery as her pussy. Raven's eyes went wide in pleasure as he penetrated her asshole, the rim of his cock sliding easily over the slightly rough ridges before it started to wriggle and writhe like her pussy, the strange coarse muscles all tightening around his cock like crazy, almost tearing his dick apart as she began to let out moans of pleasure. Ah damn why ass. And pussy in one day such a bastard. Hey. Did you fuck Emily? Am I making her a cuck? Does it feel good in my ass? Will you make me come again? Raven asked, gripping her buttocks as he pulled out and pushed back inside, pulling her up against his cock as he shoved it in deeply, her ass making an obscene popping as his tip teased her gaping hole before plunging back inside with little care for her body, merely ravaging her like a beast. Mmm, ah. Fuck me harder, orc. 
I'm so tight, so hot, so big. Make me scream for more. Zestria wailed as he pounded her ass, the tip of his cock bumping and grinding against her sensitive nerve endings as they expanded and stretched to accommodate him, making her moan and gurgle with delight, her slick cunt and tight asshole pulsating on his cock, massaging his cock as she quivered in pleasure, the sweet musk of her arousal and her scent filling his nostrils as he humped her like a jackhammer. Raven's body felt amazing, the pink energy flooding into him, causing his body and mind to go crazy, as his hands began to pull at the body, squeezing her tits. At the same time, he fucked her, his fingers digging into her skin, the force causing slight red marks and bruising in her flesh as her body shuddered, tightening her asshole around his cock from the sensation. His cock felt thicker and longer than it had in the past, yet still, he could not hold back. It was like her ass sucked at him, pulling on him, her sphincter pulling his cock more profound than it ever should have been able to. His hips pushed forwards, ramming his dick deep inside of her until he bottomed out, his balls resting on her smooth pussy lips, making her moan and purr like a cat, letting groaning as her knees buckled. Her face began to writhe, and her eyes rolled back, gasping as his cock erupted in a hot flow of his essence, filling her with his seed. MNNN, what? Finished already. Ugh. MNNNNNGH. Zestria was about to mock him, but suddenly her face cramped, feeling his cock increasing, its shape began to distort and twist like a monster as her body was lifted from the bed. Two monstrous arms hoisted her tiny body into the air as his manticore-dot-shaped cock held her in the air, as she wrapped her legs around his thighs desperately. You said you wanted to experience my true self, right? His deep voice distorted like a monster from the deep abyss, his breath so warm it felt like flames against her cheek, his scaled legs smooth but hard to touch, as his extended tail wrapped around her neck, hoisting her in mid. Air, tightening around her airway as she looked at him with both terrified and horny eyes. How is it? Raven asked with brightly glowing blue eyes, his pupils like slits watching with a smile as her asshole began to undulate on his transforming cock, no longer a mere orc's cock as she said, but a monster, a manticore's cock that combined the grith and thick shaft of his high dot orc blood, with the perfect curve and huge glands of his human heritage, all mixed like a true chimera's meat club. NNNGH, gah. It hurts. My ass. NMMM it's so good. She gasped, thrashing about in pleasure. It was unbelievable how big and thick this beast of manhood was. The sharp barbs were rubbing against the softness inside her, her inside stretching and accepting every inch, causing her to feel more complete than ever before, pushing into her guts as if he could fit three of his old cock inside her. Do you like it? You look in pain, but your cunt looks so happy, all that thick honey squirting from your filthy hole. Chapter 7676 Succubus and the Beast, R18 you are listening at novel full dot audio. N. A little dark slash violent please take care if you dislike huge insertion. Slowly, he pulled out from her ass, not wanting to damage her permanently as his body almost broke the bed from its sheer size and weight, her ass making obscene sounds as pools of sperm began to spurt from her asshole when his cock popped from the entrance. Raven couldn't help but feel his monstrous cock dancing in the air, enchanted by her lewd buttocks gaping as her tight inner walls pushed his sperm onto the bed like gooey bubbles with a wet splutter. So. Do you want to taste a cock that will make you its slave forever? I don't think you can remain a mere succubus if I fuck your pussy with this. You understand, right? His voice was slightly cold and distorted as his body, nearly seven foot tall, leaned over her, pushing the heavy cock against her face. The thick scent was musky and spicy, but Zestria's nose snorted, her lips pressing along the slimy shaft, ignoring it was inside her ass, as she slurped on the sticky wet mixture from her intestinal juices, pussy's delicious honey in his cock's thick milk. Zestria's dreamy eyes looked at his face, her body almost dominated by his presence. Tell me. Am, am, am. am I before Emily? Her voice was softer, like a songbird chirping, as she kissed his glands, 
her golden eyes peeking at his face as if seeking a positive response, softly stroking his body with her delicate fingers as she watched his changed appearance with lustful and captivated eyes. You were first, both your ass and pussy, even your mouth. Raven's hands stroked her soft cheeks, easily deforming them like soft clay, as her pretty golden eyes and pink hair cascaded on the bedsheets, looking up at his vast, muscular upper body and big black horns that were filled with strange runes. His beast form made her heart pound faster. His orc one was charming and attractive, there was no doubt about that. But this form caused her womb to tighten as if dying for his cock and thick seed, she wanted to give birth to his children, to accept his entire shaft and let him destroy her until she could do nothing but swear to be his little succubus for life. MMNNPH NGH I will dot give them all. Hmm dot HMMN to you. As if she had made her choice, one that might change her future and existence completely, suddenly her lips clamped around the thick glands, letting out a delighted gasp as he began to gently push into her mouth, forcing it open to her limits, brushing against her tongue as his rod pressed it down into the floor of her mouth. She tried not to gag, but she was tiny compared to his immense proportions. His monster cock looked more prominent than any other humanoid man in this world, so much thicker and longer that she felt a sense of terror and excitement from it entering her pussy, but now, with the rest of his monstrous body pushing on her shoulders, as well as his tail wrapped tightly around her throat, his cock was pushed into her throat, as it bulged and stopped most of her air from passing through, a sense of excitement as she was choked from his cock and tail at once. This woman. She drives me crazy. Her voice. Body. Scent. I want to dominate her. Crush her spirit, and make her only think of me. A succubus needs multiple men. Bullshit. I will give her a body only I can satisfy, make her beg me, come running to me like a slutty little dog, never to look at another man. Raven's mind was slightly distorted as he looked at her with passionate and obsessive eyes, he wouldn't allow any of his women to be taken, he would make them only look at him even if he had to break their body and mind first. The thought made his beast. Form cock swell, surging up inside Zestria, making her choke when his shaft broke through her insides and found its way in deeper until her nose poked out of her pursed lips. At the same time, her fingers dug into his thighs, trying to breathe desperately with snot and drool oozing from her nose and lips as he ignored her moving his hips and enjoying the tight pleasure of her throat and esophagus. Ah, NNGH. Ah. She choked on his cock as he penetrated further, his tip sliding along her tongue while his monstrous testicles rested against her soft pink lips, stealing a kiss from them, she could barely breathe from the constant pressure of being held down by her face. After some time, his cock began to slip back out of her throat, forcing her to gasp for breath, but more so, let go of his cock with her lips as he pushed back inside again. Her whole head was forced to move with his thrusts, causing him to bury his cock entirely inside her mouth, filling her throat with the hot slickness of his monster flesh. His large hands moved to hold on to her hair, holding her close, pushing his thick cock deep into her throat, pulling it out when his glands was too big to fit comfortably, as his eyes turned dark blue with lust as he watched himself sinking deeper into the depths of her throat, her body beginning to spasm like a coiled spring, his giant balls bouncing off her chin and cheeks. Raven felt the small ball of purple in his body exploding with purple essence, while her body was the same, her pink core was looking at his body as both rapidly began to gain the benefits, her body became more flexible. Her throat was now like a sticky pussy clinging to his rod, able to expand and adjust to take his monstrous cock without almost dying, her skin became shiny and lustrous as he rubbed her round tits. She had no control over her actions, all thoughts leaving her mind as she was mesmerized by her transformation, unable to control her body's desire for pleasure and the thick essence pouring into her mouth being guzzled down her throat as she continuously climaxed from the powerful purple essence ravaging and violating her body from her feet to her brain. The massive, muscular beast above her grabbed her breasts, kneading them gently with both hands, squeezing tightly as his tail released her throat and slid along her neglected twat. 
Zestria's slimy hole was still gaping to the size of his orc dot shaped member as the phallic tip began to tease her entrance, vibrating softly, causing her hips to lift into the air, her throat and lips shuddering along his cock. Raven's lance twitched within her as she breathed heavily on his shaft, causing him to groan loudly as he pulled from her lips with a resounding pop, her mouth suddenly gagging and almost vomiting as vast amounts of drool and sticky fluids oozed from her soft lips. Do you want to have sex? He asked, her body lying powerless on the bed, looking at his face with dim golden eyes, her body so full of essence she wouldn't need to feed for a year. I. She started to speak before her lips quivered, trapped between fear of being killed and the desire of all succubi. Are you going to fuck me? Or are we going to leave it here? He chuckled darkly. You didn't like your first time with my cock, little succubus. She glared up at him, her pale cheeks flushed red with heat, her fingers rubbing over her swollen clit, she needed more. Raven was too much, but she had no choice. His dick was so big and long that her very instincts cried out in fear, but those instincts also desired this man's member to enter her honeypot and stir her like a pot of creamed oats. And besides, if Emily found out about what she did, there would be trouble. The last thing she wanted was for her friend to be jealous of her relationship. Please. Just once. Zestria asked as she lifted her legs and ass in the air before putting both feet over his shoulders, exposing both holes to Raven's lustful gaze as her sticky ass pressed against his abdomen. Chapter 7777 Fallen Succubus, R18, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Oh. Do you want me to fuck you in the anvil position? Are you sure? You might rupture your insides or die. He teased. As his massive, beastly hand massaged the erect pink nipples that peeked from their sunken beds, she looked into his blue eyes with desire. Her pink lips quivered slightly when she realized how badly she wanted to be fucked by such an imposing male. A giant cock made from flesh, muscle and veins. It didn't look human, it looked more like he belonged in a fantasy story than any reality. She couldn't refuse even if she tried, all her bones were melting. As the beast leaned forward, Zestria could smell him and taste his cock in the air, his monstrous member pushing itself along her slit, letting go of her nipples but not leaving them alone as it pushed its way deep into her pussy, driving in until his head popped inside her. Gah! Ngjitich, Guha! MMNNPH. Zestria moaned and screamed, her eyes bulging as she grasped onto his arms with both hands, blood oozing from his slight fury arms where she pierced him with her sharp claws. You are in pain, right? Do you want me to end it fast or savor it slowly? His deep voice caused her mind to drift from each word to the next. She was ecstatic already and couldn't answer anything but guttural screams. He had already easily torn through one woman's soul. He knew that any woman on this planet would fall under his control if he could penetrate them with this much essence and his manticore's rod. This creature would make her a succubus, addicted to his thick essence like a junkie. The hot fluid from his balls rubbed against the walls of her wet snatch, his enormous length pushed inside, her soft tunnel spread wide open with obscene squelches as she squirted from the inhuman pleasure as his soft barbs pulled along all her sensitive spots simultaneously. His slime-coated shaft plunged deeper into her body until he drove his hips downward with a grunt, sending jolts of pleasure down her spine like electrical shocks from the monster below her, allowing his huge, purple dick to be buried up to its base within her hole at last. Ah, uh, I can feel my pussy changing shape. Not like before. It won't ever be the same. Raven. You. Hmm, take responsibility. His arms slipped from around her neck, and her legs went weak as she stared into the beast's eyes, they seemed to grow even darker. Something shifted between their stares, his grip tightened on the puffy mounds of her tits as his thighs pushed hard against her pelvis to stop it from sliding out. Then. There was another prominent bulge pushing itself back and forth in her tiny slit, his tail now teasing her clit as his hips began to move slowly, 
the wet sperm inside her body bubbling and squelching as it squirted out each time his cock gouged deep inside her, making her womb it's a toy, as her pussy tightly enveloped him with a warm and loving embrace. If I take responsibility, you'll become my personal succubus. The muscular manticore asked, his neon eyes peering at her, speaking strangely seriously, Zestria could only nod slightly but quickly. Her body shuddered as she saw the utter bliss in his glowing eyes, as his hands began to caress her breasts, stroking over the slight bruises, gently stroking the teeth marks along her nipples, causing her body to shudder, trusting her hips into the air as her body arched, his cock filling her as her mouth opened into a huge circle. Oh God! MNNNN. Raven was enjoying the sight of how beautifully her cunt accepted him with ease and gave her pleasure despite being a virgin before he no longer treated her roughly, rather, his movements were slow, methodic and sensual, as his hips swayed ever so gently, feeling her swarm insides tightening around him, as his glands dragged her squishy floods, a new sensation of pleasure overcame Zestria that began to flood her brain, eating away at her sanity and thoughts each time HRE penetrated her body. When she felt his hands grasp either side of her hips with a soothing caress, stroking them with his thumb before pushing firmly up, sending her pelvis against the bed repeatedly. It's really good. So gentle and fucking deep. Hmm, so deep. His every stroke caused her mind to melt, the pleasure from his thick essence that flooded her body in his loving caress, which made her feel as if he was pouring honey directly into her brain, causing breathless excitement, trembling with lust like it was liquid metal dripping from the walls of her burning furnace. Her legs slipped off his shoulders, and he pressed closer to her chest, squishing her breasts flat as his powerful pecs brushed against her hardened nipples, causing her to gasp in pleasure. Zestria allowed him to take control, driving his length inside faster than before. MMPH NNGH all. Gala. The succubus mouth opened to emit a sharp cry as her twat tightened around his throbbing purple member, her entire body began to shudder as her ass rocked to his rhythm, his tail rubbing against her clit, causing her pussy to flood with sticky fluids, more and more with each downward thrust of his manticore cock deep inside her body. NNNMMM Raven. I won't tell. Won't tell. So love me like this. MNNNGH. Kiss me more fill me up, please. The pair began to kiss, entangling their tongues as their hips moved in unison, gentle but filled with power, lustful but with grace like an elegant dance, as her insides tightened from another climax, his hips most ever so slightly faster, causing her orgasm to explode, her fluids squirting into the air, as she looked at him for mercy. As their bodies pressed closer and closer together, the need for more ecstasy set in, the manticore's member swelling as the power of her pink womb embraced him. Her cunt was gushing like an ocean of warm nectar, sliding it inside her core, his glands poking deeper with each stroke, squirting with purple essence until her insides were sticky as he poured it all inside. The next moment his cock exploded, with a torrent of hot sperm, until her pussy was overflowing with his seed and filled with the seed of her transformation. Zestria cried out at last, her body spasming, and he huffed heavily against her lips while she kissed him back, moving her lips away to look up into his pale, glowing eyes. As they rested their foreheads against each other, she saw how proud he looked, the lustful animal looking down at her and smiling, he squeezed her tits and kissed her once again. I have a request. He whispered, licking his lips as he squeezed her breasts roughly, a ripple passing through his muscles. You must accept me. She nodded, and he released her tit as the power of the purple essence began to take effect and made her body tremble. He wanted her to become one of his succubuses and give herself completely and fully. To allow him into her body so he could take her essence. As Zestria fell into his arms and wrapped her soft legs around his back, the massive beast embraced her tightly, she felt something changing as his essence and strange feeling filled her body, as if butterflies were fluttering in her womb, difficult to breathe, she suddenly felt a stabbing pain in her pelvis, as she quickly looked down. What? Her bright pink tattoo began to change, and the former demonic woman transformed into a beautiful demoness, but her arms were spread as if welcoming something, 
the color now purple as strange tribal markings were slowly painted around the image, as her mouth opened, releasing groans of pain, while Raven's arms gently embraced her, stroking her soft, sweaty back. This. Why does it look like a succubus and manticore's tattoo merged into one? Dot theta m a few hours passed since he came to the hotel with Zestria, and he still retained his manticore form, gently using the shower on warm to help wash the cute succubi's body. The moment he came inside her, and she started changing, her consciousness vanished, and so did his powerful lust and desire. Thus he started to help clean the room and arranged for a meal filled with nutrients to be delivered after their bath, and used his knowledge of taking care of Phyllis to ease any pain she might feel in her muscles tomorrow. Ah. But her pussy is fucked. It's still gaping. Damn. It'll restore soon, but can her body enjoy normal sex even if we went separate ways? Sorry, Rhea. You were just too beautiful and alluring, let me take you on a real date next time, have dinner, see a movie or go to the theater, whatever you want. Slowly her eyes flickered while he spoke gently to her, like a lover not wanting her first time to be a bad memory where she woke up alone, he called Lilith. He messaged Emily with the truth that Zestria was suffering from her yearning and he would be taking responsibility for her, although Emily seemed a little angry. Her messages after the first jealous text were supportive and told him things to help when caring for a succubus, her tail needed warm water, not hot, and to avoid using powerful scents on the body wash. I'm really lucky, but this girl. She gives me the same feeling as Lilith. Did I do something weird to her? Chapter 7878 Mother's Advice You are listening at NovelFull.audio Inside the room, Raven sat on the cheap bed, his 85 kilograms weight now even heavier due to his increase in muscle mass, likely over 100 kilograms when in his seven-foot manticore form. Zestria was leaning against his chest, her soft pink hair brushing along his muscular chest that shone in the dingy light. She affectionately brushed her fingertips along his dark almond skin, her lips seductively dragging across the bottom of her lips with a charming smile. Last night. It was amazing. Her voice was still hoarse, her throat a little sore, aching from having him inside her and causing havoc. Yeah, it was really pleasant. How are you feeling? He treated her with a more gentle touch after they finally finished, her body filled with bruises and marks where he was too passionate and vicious, which caused her weaker body to become filled with marks. Zestria leaned against him, her nose sniffing, pressing her lips against his chest with a light peck, closing her eyes tightly as she absorbed everything about him as if burning him into all of her senses at once. Dot theta m, do you want the truth or for me to speak like a gentle maiden? Her voice was a little raspy with a cheeky tone. Raven's arms wrapped around her back, slowly stroking along her spine, her black tail stroking ever so slightly against his skin, the soft sensation causing tingles to shoot down his arm, making him feel ticklish. You can be yourself with me, I will accept it all. I am vulgar. You might be disillusioned. Try me ha. Huh? He replied, brushing his fingertips through her soft hair, enjoying the slightly fruity scent of the shampoo and conditioner from the hotel, despite being a cheap room, the products were decent. The pair began to enjoy peace as the morning sun rose, its brilliance shimmering from the window's shoddy blinds, while Zestria seemed a little shy to speak her mind. Well. I feel great, of course, it's the first time I've ever experienced a true yearning, your hot creamy essence is still pooling in my womb, constantly reminding me of the amazing night we had, but don't you think your cock is a bit too big? My thighs. Throat. Asshole. And especially my little pussy are sore, it's like you fisted me and pulled my insides apart and scrunched them up over and over, I won't deny how much you made me come but. If you can make a succubus princess feel this way. Won't that poor old virgin dryad die? Ha ha. As a man, it's always nice to be a beautiful woman first and to hear such compliments. I will try to be more gentle next time. Don't. Her voice suddenly sounded as she quickly covered her lips, her eyes widening as she looked shocked at her actions. 
Slowly she removed her hands, looking at him with an embarrassed look, I mean. That rough sex has already changed me. How can I come to some boring missionary crap now? But for the other succubi. Don't be so rough. That form. That huge cock. Only use it for me, okay? He could see a slight sneaky smile on her face as if she was thinking about last night, her eyes flicking down to his lower body from time to time while biting her lower lip. Other women might break. Or become addicted. Her voice became lower towards the end as she looked away, her fingers stroking across his lips, stopping him from speaking, while her other hand cupped his bulge, stroking it through the soft cotton boxers, a delighted look on her face. So you want that to be your personal use? A cock only for Zestria, my little succubi princess. N.N., is it no good? She tilted her head, looking cute, as she caressed his bulge with a faster but more careful touch, her lips curving into a smile as she felt it was growing from her simple contact. Bira. Bira. Suddenly their moment together was ruined as a phone suddenly began to ring, the tone was a boring standard tone, nothing special, as the blissful face of Zestria vanished, her body shuddering as she looked to the desk where her phone continued vibrating. Ah. Sorry, Raven, I have to take this. It's for work. No worries. Do you need me to leave the room? I can go and shower while you chat if you want. Eh. But. Are you sure? No problem, I'll take a while, so relax and deal with your business. He gently stroked her cheek, kissing the succubus on her cheek, the soft taste of her sweet skin lingering as he headed to the bathroom holding two towels and some spare clothes while humming to himself. Hello, it's me, Zestria. Suddenly from behind him, the serious and strict voice of Zestria sounded husky and direct, filled with a sense of commanding power. He smiled at noticing the slight hoarse sound, knowing that his tool affected her this way as he swaggered into the bathroom, ready to clean off his tired body of sweat and shared bodily fluids. I can only apologize, mother, I suffered a fit last night and spent the night. With a man. He would not pry into their conversation, as he worried Claudina might hunt him down if she knew it was him so soon. So Raven considered interesting and mundane things as he climbed into the shower. That girl makes a lot of mess when she climaxes. Should I bring bedwetting sheets in my item ring next time I meet her? About thirty minutes later, he came out of the shower, his body wearing a light pair of black trousers with a slight stretch in their material, his chest was bare, with an unbuttoned white silk shirt, as he saw Zestria watching him as he came in. Her eyes were lustful, but her face soon became focused, as she seemed regretful. It seems the lust and chaos of her fit have finally ended. You good? He asked, sitting on the bed, bouncing lightly, her eyes narrowed like little crescent moons before she stood up and dressed. Raven watched as Zestria began to wear her usual outfit, the pink hair now black and her cloth robes replaced by her usual enforcer outfit. With her golden eyes, she looked at him with a conflicted look because, during the yearning, a succubus would be completely awake and have some form of control, if she didn't like the guy, his scent, or flavor, then she could avoid losing control, this was even more true for a higher level of bloodlines. Zestria herself could have easily controlled it with her fingers and tail if she rushed home, but meeting Raven changed her plans, she wasn't angry, but she wanted to get to know him, make sure he wasn't a bastard. Now that the deed was done, she could still feel his warmth inside her, while her insides felt throbbing as if his huge member was still filling her body. However, their true desires and needs are most important, more often than not, it would lead to an awkward situation. Like now, she wanted to ask for his contact details, but she already knew them. Her mind wondered how to make their relationship one, not of just colleagues and that of a man and woman, she walked towards the door about to leave, as her mind was more chaotic than when suffering her fit. I'm alright. I have to work. Last night I was supposed to return but had a fit, so. Raven nodded, 
remembering that she wasn't an adventurer but an enforcer, so their rules were likely closer to an office worker or public servant than someone free like him, so he felt bad for keeping her here so long. Looking at her walking with that limp, it's really bad of me to have not thought of her daily life, she looks like someone twisted her legs in a circle snapping the joints to her hips, such an obvious walk. He wasn't exaggerating it was like her right leg was dragging along the floor, but she couldn't help it, his manticore-sized member, it was like he was still embedded deep within her like some curse or magic stopping her from thinking of anything but that huge thing as she started to turn the handle. Well, that's it then. Raven sighed as the door opened, feeling some things are not meant to be. Suddenly, the sound of the door slamming shut, then a brisk aroma of peaches and vanilla assaulted his nose, as two arms wrapped in a silken material wrapped around his neck, before Zestria's red lips closed his, sucking on them with a passionate kiss, as her tongue pushed into his mouth. Dot. Her actions caused his heart to race as he held her tightly, lifting Zestria into the air and spinning her around, he didn't know why such a simple kiss brightened his lowering mood her legs wrapped around him as she began to obsessively kiss his face and lips with a loud smacking sound. Moi mm nmmph. Zestria looked into his eyes, shining with a strange light as she kissed him one last time, her soft silky lips pulling on his, as she licked the surface as if to savor his flavor. She took a deep breath and started asking questions rapidly, kissing him more passionately as each one passed. Can I call you, can we meet again? Will you be my boyfriend? Am I too forward? I don't want to part like that. Will you listen to my complaints about work? Stunned by her onslaught of loving and fiery passion, Raven could only listen to her questions and requests while enjoying the sticky warm tongue that began to coil around his, sucking on him violently. A bridge of saliva formed as she pulled away with a pop. Ah, why are you women so damn cute? First Emily, now you. If you can accept not being my only woman, I will give you everything possible. Complain all you like, meet me when you want, if you want to say I'm your lover, then say it. Call me when you are down, happy. No, just call me when you want. If I am not in the dungeon, I will try to answer or honestly tell you I'm with another woman. I also want to spend more time with you. His arms tightened around her back as she let out a painful yet euphoric gasp, her nose sniffling as she rubbed her face and tail against his. Really. Really. I am a succubus. One day, I'll become an empress, and you might be drained dry. I get jealous. I cannot be honest with my friends. So I argue with Emily. Even though I love her so much. She felt his powerful hands stroking her head, brushing along her sensitive horns with his thumbs. Do not worry, I will accept all of you. Now go to work, then call me later and tell me how bad a day was, how it was hard to walk because of my stupid monster cock, anything. Just keep smiling and stop looking so sad okay? Ha ha ha. Zestria's face became like a blooming garden, her cheeks red as she laughed with a beautiful voice. Honestly, Raven felt she was similar to Emily as her body slowly parted from his, her suit changed from the revealing one to a slightly more reserved suit, her lower body wearing a skirt, chest mostly covered as she skipped to the door, slipping through the gap before she peeked back inside. He he only my husband can see my skin now. Fufu my mother said hello, by the way. Ha ha ha. Raven suddenly realized that Claudina was behind this, as the happy clap of her shoes tapping the wooden corridor sounded in his ears, smiling bitterly as the cute succubus managed to get what she wanted so easily. Damn old women. I will fight you to the death. Chapter 79, Bonus, 79 The tide begins to recede you are listening at novel full audio. My thighs are a bit sore. Raven whispered as he walked down the busy morning road at a brisk pace. His eyes scanned around, feeling a sense of nostalgia watching all the people rushing for the early bus or dashing to their office to arrive even a minute earlier. I don't miss this way of life, uh. Today, Raven felt amazing. There wasn't much to do, 
and he would probably visit a random dungeon with Lilith later, she did start clamoring about her weapon and buying armor and cute clothes. Well, I did buy some things, but now I've got more money, let's pay the rent for the next month, and also top dot up the electric and magia bill so they don't cut off our oven. To Lilith. Chapter 8080. DMPA you are listening at novelfull.audio. Raven walked quite quickly, his mind set on meeting Lilith and having a nice date in the dungeon, in the future, he might be too busy as it would take at least 10 dungeon dives to rank up again. Hmm. How many have I managed to clear so far? Redoing the first one doesn't count, apparently. Current dungeon clearance record. 4, 6 more. Ah, uh, I want to reach higher ranks. Lilith is the same rank as me already, how depressing. Suddenly he noticed a strange flyer on the wall, for some reason, he was drawn to it, stepping forward to read it. Welcome the beloved mother's return. She will guide us from all pain and suffering. Accept the love of Eve. Find the path to Eden. He suddenly realized why the pattern was so attractive to him, it resembled the mural from his first dungeon and the tattoo that he, Eve and Lilith all share on their pelvic area, while his was in the center of his chest and seemed to grow each time he grew stronger. Zestria 2 Somehow this flyer made him feel a sense of foreboding, the Eve he met in the dream didn't seem to be that bad, or rather something told him she might have been what they wanted in the past, but what now? That obsessive gaze towards him and her declaration at the end caused him to feel endless worry. Will she be crazy and evil? Or just crazy about me? Raven shook his head, not wanting to dwell too much on what could be, focusing on his current goals instead, which were to make Lilith able to protect herself and a bigger goal to make the women around him happy in content. Be it sexually, financially, or emotionally. He wanted them to be completely satisfied. I must avoid stupid misunderstandings like with Phyllis. I need time to speak with her, I hope Emily will understand and accept this. Even though Phyllis was his lover first, Emily was his priority as she was his first new girlfriend, and he wouldn't prioritize anyone else over her. Excuse me, sir, may I ask for your identification? A pleasant female's voice sounded, her words were polite, and she spoke formally. Raven turned his body to find a woman in a full black suit with golden fixtures, she had a name tag on her bosom with the words. DMK. Senior Sexual Agent, Armina Braun, their full name was. The Dangerous Monster Protection Agency aimed to protect normal males from being killed by accident by female monsters that needed to absorb essence or blood to live. He took out his adventurer identification card without any hassle. However, in his mind, he felt her eyes like torches, filling him with worry she might be able to see he wasn't a normal orc anymore, but she said nothing and showed a faint smile. These agents all have a certain ability to see through most magical disguises and modified identification cards. Sorry to bother you, Mr. Granbell. Armina began to search, looking at his documents, she could easily see his real name as they were part of a joint unit run by the Bureau and the country's government to catch dangerous monsters above level C and ensure they were properly listed. But why would they suddenly come to Arcadia City? This has never happened before. Is it related to that damn cult? He felt a sense of anger towards them, even if they praised and worshipped Eve, the fact their presence would make his life more difficult and annoying caused him to want them to be eradicated. Slowly her check finished, and Armina looked up at him, the woman was short, only around 5 feet 4 inches tall, her long hair was white, and beautiful red eyes shimmered in the sunlight, but her movement seemed sluggish and slow. He tried to avoid looking, but her huge chest would give even the Minotaur Miriam a run for her money, as it almost popped open, her chest buttons and black suit jacket were extremely tight. Good, all good. Impressive, you have increased your rank and become so strong in a mere week. I hope you will contact the DMPA should you have any issues regarding the current cultists that are amok in your city and any dangerous female monsters. I sure as hell won't. Thank you very much, Miss Braun. I will do my best to help you perform your duties without any troublesome issues. Haha. 
Good, sorry. I am a little sleepy, so I'll leave. But you look familiar. Hmm. Her words became slurred as she turned around, maybe she thought, as an orc, he couldn't hear that well, but now halfway to his third gate, he could hear her words. Ah. His blood smelt so good. Should I have asked him if I could get a taste? Would that get me fired? Hmm. But he looked familiar. That almond skin. An orc. She was now about fifteen meters away before looking back at him over her shoulder, to which he just gave her a wave and smile, heading in the opposite direction. B-V-E-C-O. Isn't he the porn star from the ardent orc? Raven heard her loud voice, his feet stumbling as he almost tripped, because of her accurate voice, he felt a little embarrassed. He continued, unable to see or hear the strange vampire girl's words, as his apartment came into view, but this was bound to happen. All the DMPA girls can see through illusions and magic. So the special illusion magic used to hide mine and Miriam's face in those porn videos was probably useless. I should avoid any girls in the DMPA who must absorb essence to live. Then, he realized something was in his pocket. A small black rectangular card with a pretty gold font. Armina Bruin Vampiric Donation Card Registered Partner. Alastair, Raven, Grand Bell Number. One, dot. She set him up, the vampire had signed him on her donation list. Why did she add him to this list? Now if she needed a blood donator, he would be required to prove it. He never expected her to be that lax, although she seemed lazy. But below, the remuneration was quite large, although nothing he couldn't earn from the dungeon. 1000 credits per full meal 500 credits for a snack 250 credits for non-blood essence. Well, let's abuse the last one since I can choose. Let's make her regret forcing me to become her donor. I wonder why it says number one, though, normally, a cute vampire girl like her with huge tits will have countless men signing up online. He quickly arrived home, rushing up the stairs as he saw the open door and two cute purple eyes peeking out the door. When he was walking down the road, his feet began to rush, tapping the ground before they smashed down heavily near the end, his body lunging through the door as she stood there waiting. Her beautiful hair was tied into a ponytail, her body wearing only a cute apron as she spread her arms and allowed him to tackle her down to the floor, her soft ass squashed under his heavy body, their lips pressing together in a passionate kiss as his tail slammed the door shut to keep her sexy body for his eyes only. His clothes rustling against each other echoed throughout the apartment until they were naked on the bed together, pulling off each other's clothes without care. His hands grabbed her perfect breasts with lusty fingers while she grasped his thick cock and stroked it eagerly, moaning softly into his mouth when he bit her tongue gently enough not to hurt but still leave a mark. He ran up between her wide hips to slide under the thin strings of her thong panties, his long fingers sliding along her soft petals, warm and sticky as if ready for his touch. His fingers kneaded at her large cherries and twisted them lightly before sliding over her flat stomach. At the same time, she sucked on his tongue, slurping down his saliva with an enamored face. The pair slowly pulled away from their passionate greeting as the purple of her eyes and his blue began to dim, seemingly, they entered a strange heat for each other, maybe related to the fact that he had already filled her tail with his essence, bonding them. I'm home, Lilith. Welcome home, honey I made breakfast. And I'm the MNNPH. Dot theta M Raven kissed her lips, sucking on them as he didn't care to speak more, pulling away, ah, you're the sweet honey I want to pour onto it. He lifted her easily with one arm as she grabbed onto his body, her tail coiled around him, as their tips began to brush against each other, stepping into the main room, he saw delicious pancakes and honey with a fruit salad on the side, although the fruit was a bit messy he felt happy she at least tried her best, as he carried her to the sofa, sitting her on his knee, as he dragged both plates and bowls towards them. I miss you, my cute little slum girl. Humph, stupid orc. Don't call me that. I won't let you fuck my tail Aegean Fufu. I'll just use your other hole, Raven joked as his fingers slipped inside her underwear, 
stroking along her soft petals. Ah. Eat the pancakes. Don't. Don't tease me. I just got clean. You can always go shower again, right? Her cheeks turned pink, her small hands gripping his wrist when he slid out of her panties, sending a shiver up her spine. He gave her ample time for her body to cool down before kissing her deeply as her arms wrapped around his neck, her hips grinding slightly, before she tapped his cheek, picking up the fork and moving the pancakes to his lips. Be good. Eat, okay. Okay, okay.